How to properly apply thermal paste. In this example, we will explore the most common thermal paste application techniques. Under the IHS, integrated heat spreader, is the CPU die itself. In this example, the die is monolithic. The first technique demonstrated is known as the ice cream method. It uses a moderate application to fully cover the CPU die underneath. Using a piece of glass to mimic the bottom of a CPU cooler, it is easy to observe the spread of the paste. Please note, under normal circumstances, the thermal paste will expand further when heat is applied. This will always happen. Removing the glass gives us a greater understanding of the conductivity points in the application. Please note the full coverage of a monolithic CPU die. The next example will explore multi-die CPUs. This CPU in particular is not a multi-die CPU. However, for the sake of learning, let's pretend it is. The technique being used is widely known as the line method. This method is used to thermally, quote unquote, connect the dyes together, giving greater heat dissipation. Applying pressure shows the complete coverage across both theoretical dies. Again, removing the glass gives us a greater understanding of the conductivity points in the application. Please note the full coverage of the multi-die CPU. This next method, although uncommon, is worth mentioning. This technique is known as the spackle method, utilizing a tool to spread the thermal paste evenly across the entire IHS. With great patience, this method can possibly be used to isolate in testing scenarios. However, this method is played with air pockets and dead zones over the CPU die. This may result in higher temperatures and lower CPU longevity. Note the coverage of the CPU die. It may look complete, but our earlier test proves this otherwise. Here are all the spread patterns, including one where too little is used. 
I hope these tests help you decide which method is best for you. Thank you for watching.